Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded and the recording will be posted publicly. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I'd like to turn the call over to your host, Charles Gamble. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today to the introduction to the Mayor Community Survey and Group Quarters Data Webinar. Um, as Lisa stated, my name is Charles Gamble, and I work in the Mayor Community Survey Office. And with me today, I have Nicole Butler, who's a branch chief of the Group Quarters Data Collection Branch, as well as William Corbury, survey statistician from the Populations and Housing Programs Branch. Um, today's webinar is being recorded, and the recording, along with the transcript, will be posted on our website within a few weeks at the link on the slide. And also, if you do want to follow along during today's webinar, the slides are also posted at the link provided. Uh, and this link is, should be also being provided in the chat now at this time if you want to follow along from there. Uh, during today's webinar, if you have questions, you can post your questions in the Q&A section. And one of our colleagues will do their best to answer your question as quickly as possible. And there will be a short segment at the end of today's webinar for questions as well. So before we get too specific on today's subject matter of group quarters, I want to provide a quick overview of the of, about the United States Census Bureau as a whole. So the Census Bureau is the largest of 13 primary government statistical agencies. And in 2020, the U.S. Census Bureau employed more than 10,000 professional staff and 450,000 hourly employees to conduct the 2020 census. Now, in comparison, only three U.S. companies, such as Walmart, uh, Amazon, and Yum Foods, had worldwide workforces that were larger. So while most people are familiar with the decennial census that happens every 10 years and our most recent 2020 census, we also conduct more than 130 censuses and surveys of households and businesses across the nation each year. Now, this does include the American Community Survey and more than 30 other household surveys as well. There are also over 60 economic programs, and of these, the economic census is the biggest and most comprehensive, providing a measure of American businesses every five years. And there is also information on our nation's public sector provided by the census of governments. Now, our mission here at the Census Bureau is to serve you as the nation's leading provider of quality data about its people and economy. And our goal is to provide a best mix of timeliness, relevancy, quality, and cost of the data products and services we provide. So as for our agenda today and today's webinar, first I will cover the basics of the ACS. So this will include uh, the history of the ACS, the topics included in the survey, and the geographies covered. Uh, then I will turn it over to William Corber, who will speak about key terminology and descriptions as they relate to group quarters. Next, Nicole Butler will provide information on the data collections procedures as it pertains to the surveying of group quarters populations. Uh, William will then come back to speak directly about data products available for group quarters and table links will be provided uh, where the data can actually be found. Uh, we will then co conclude this webinar by covering some resources available on our website for learning more about the ACS and group quarters. So starting off with the basics, uh, the American Community Survey is the nation's most current, reliable, and accessible data source for local statistics on critical planning topics such as age, uh, children, veterans, commuting, and much more. Now, the ACS samples approximately 3.5 million addresses each year, and these data collected continuously uh, throughout the year to produce annual social, economic, housing, and demographic estimates. Uh, the data collected through the ACS are used to inform and the distrib distribution of more than $675 billion of federal government spending each year. And the ACS is designed to produce critical information on small areas and small population groups previously collected once every 10 years as part of the decennial census long form. Now, with the introduction of the ACS, communities and businesses receive more current data and the census questionnaire uh, sent to all households has been significantly shortened because of the ACS. Our estimates cover more than 40 topics, support more than 300 uh, known federal uses and countless non-federal uses, and businesses and communities use these 11 billion estimates each year to make vital decisions, including where to locate hospitals or schools, uh, what transportation needs uh, exist in their communities, and what goods and services businesses should provide to their communities. Now, the ACS has, does have three key uh, releases, and these are in the form of the one-year, the one-year supplemental estimates, as well as the five-year estimates. And that leads us right into our next slide, um, sticking with the three key data products that are released by the ACS with the one-year, one-year supplemental, and the five-year. Now, these data products are released about one year after the data are actually collected, 
And the ACS data is generally released in September of the calendar year after collection as the one year estimates and October after collection as one year supplemental estimates. And the five year estimates are then generally released in December. The calendar year after collection. So, for example, the one year ACS data collected from January 1st through December 31st are released September of the following year. Um, ACS uh, one year estimates combine data collected over 12 months and are available for geographic areas with a population of 60,000 or more. Uh, ACS one year supplement estimates are a subset of detailed tables that are available for geographic areas with a population of 20,000 or more. And the ACS five year estimates combine data collected over 60 months and are available for geographic areas of all sizes, regardless of the population. Uh, this year, the ACS will release the 2021 data starting on September 15th with the one year data release. That'll be followed by the one year supplemental release on October 20th. And then on the release of the five year 2021 data will be on December 8th. And the full detail uh, of data release schedule can be found at the link on the bottom of the slide, or you can simply go to census.gov forward slash ACS, then go to the news and update section, and then follow the, the, that section to the, uh, the data release section as well. And there you can find uh, many of the data releases uh, dating back several years. So in order to get a good grasp on the ACS and its evolution to its current state where we stand today, we need to look into the census history and the evolution of the census. So the first United States census was conducted in 1790 and occurred every 10 years with one form being used to collect data from all households up until 1930. Now from 1940 to the year 2000, the decennial census uh, contained a short form used to collect data from all households and a long form that was sent out uh, to collect data from a sample of households. Uh, this long form approach worked well initially, uh, but the data became less and less current as, as you can imagine as a decade progressed. So that data was becoming less and less current. So in the early 1990s, uh, there was a wide demand from many users uh, for a push for consistent data. And this led federal government, government policymakers to consider the feasibility of actually collecting social, economic, housing, and demographic data continuously throughout the decade. Um, and so in 2000, a large scale demonstration of the American Community Survey was conducted and the ACS was then fully implemented in 2005 and began collecting data each year. Now, in 2006, the ACS expanded and the group quarters population started being surveyed and data collected for the group quarter population. Now, since 2010 and moving forward, the decennial census is only a short form sent to all households, whereas the ACS now collects information at each and every year that was once collected uh, each decade by the long form. So since the American Community Survey is part of the decennial census program and evolved from the census long form, as we just learned, uh, we need to look at the, the differences between the two because there are, there are uh, several differences between the ACS and the census. Uh, so first, the ACS estimates are based on a sample of the population. That's very important to know that the ACS is a sample of the population, whereas the census is based on the official count of the population. So as I stated earlier, every, every year, 3.5 million housing unit addresses are, con are contacted to participate in the ACS. Uh, and the information obtained from the sample is then used to estimate characteristics about the total population. Now, this differs from the census, where every household in the nation is contacted. And therefore, because the ACS surveys a sample of the population, the ACS estimates uh, do include a margin of error, or MOE for short. And the MOE provides and shows how much the estimate may vary from the true population, or the true value, rather. Now, what is collected? The ACS collects on uh, those social, economic, housing, demographic characteristics, whereas the census collects on basic demographics, such as age, sex, race, Hispanic origin. As far as GQ types, um, and these, these are GQ types incorporated into each program. The ACS collects on group quarters, such as college dorms, uh, military quarters, nursing facilities, as well as correctional facilities. And this covers both institutional and non-institutional GQs. And the census covers a more comprehensive set of GQs, which include the ACS GQ types, as I just mentioned, as well as additional GQ populations, uh, such as living quarters for natural disaster victims, uh, maritime vessel crews, soup kitchens, and many others. So therefore, the ACS does not include all the GQ populations that the census count encompasses. So now what is produced? Uh, the ACS produces population and housing or GQ characteristics, whereas the census produces population housing totals. Uh, when is this data available? 
and what does it reflect? So the ACS occurs annually, every single year, reflecting a period of time over which the data are collected. So either that one year over 12 months or the five year over 60 months, whereas the census occurs every 10 years and reflects a certain or specific point in time. So one of the greatest assets or attributes of the ACS is that it provides data for more geographies on an annual basis than any other household survey. Uh, now, the image on the side, can, you can see the, some of the geographies that are actually within the ACS uh, that data is produced for and the relationship between those different geographies. Uh, and looking at them, you can see the hierarchy of how the geographies flow downwards, uh, all the way down to that, the lower uh, geographies such as census tracts and block groups. Uh, but as far as the GQ populations, uh, the ACS controls the GQ sample at the state level, and most of all the data products produced are only available at that state level itself. Um, smaller geographies like the counties and census tracts are limited to only population estimates. Uh, so this is, ACS does have a unique ability to provide a wide range of geographies, uh, and this is what gives it a, it's, it's pretty much as broad appeal to many data users. Now, as far as the content itself, once again, that covers those four characteristic types. I'm not going to dive too far deep in uh, each characteristic type. But as you can see, the different um, topics that fall under each social, demographic, economic, and housing. Um, many of these topics are used to produce estimates for group quarters populations, uh, to name a few as disability, educational attainment, uh, marital and veteran status and employment. And those are coupled along with demographics, such as demographics, such as age, sex and race. Uh, and the majority of the topics are related to the group quarters uh, do fall under the social characteristics. Now, as far as collection uh, the collection process of the ACS is concerned, uh, the American Community Survey Data Collection Operation uses three modes that takes place over a three-month period, and this is internet, mail, and personal visit. So typically for housing units, the first phase of data collection is there's an invitation sent out to respond via the internet, uh, which is mailed to the sample, ad sample address. And if the household does not respond via internet, a, pep a paper questionnaire is then mailed to that sample address um, to then complete and return by mail. Now, if the Census Bureau is unable to reach the occupants of the sample address or the unit is not mailable, uh, there will be, uh, the household will then be turned over, there, the address will be turned over to what is known as CAPI or uh, Computer Assisted Personal Interviewing, uh, which is just as it states, personal interviewing. And if any time during this process, an internet response or a hard form paper questionnaire is returned, that sample address will be removed from the workload. Now, as for a group quarters population, uh, GQ are only surveyed through in-person interviews to ensure that the coverage of the population. So with that said, only a, only a sample of GQ facilities throughout the U.S. are selected for the ACS. And once a facility is selected for surveying, all residents of a location are eligible to then be uh, selected for actual interviewing. Uh, moving forward and looking ahead, the ACS looks to implement Internet data collection for residents of group quarters. And this is essentially just to enhance or increase the respondent experience as well to as well as to improve the overall data collection um, from the GQ population. And later Nicole Butler will discuss more information about GQ data collection processes. I will now turn over to William Corbett who will speak about GQ definitions and uh, some key terms regarding group group quarters. All yours, William. Thank you, Charles. Hello everyone. I I will start with the highest level. Uh, next, sorry. <laughs> next slide, please. I'll start with the highest level, living quarters, which everyone in the ACS resides in. Living quarters can be broken up into housing units and group quarters. Um, the definitions on the screen are from the 2020 ACS PRCS subject definitions, which can be found on the ACS website. The link is on the bottom of the slide. Since we're talking about group quarters, I will read the definition for, for them. They are places where people live or stay in a group living arrangement that are owned or managed by an entity or organization providing housing and or services for the residents. These services may include custodial or medical care as well as other types of assistance. And residency is commonly restricted to those receiving these services. These are not a typical household type living arrangement. People living in group quarters usually are not related to each other. Next. Next slide, thank you. 
Group quarters can be broke, can be divided into two broad categories, institutional group quarters and non-institutional group quarters. The difference between the two deals with labor force participation. We don't really expect people in institutional group quarters to be part of the labor force. Furthermore, group quarters can be divided into seven major GQ types, which four are under institutional group quarters. They are correctional facilities for adults, juvenile facilities, nursing facilities, skilled nursing facilities, and other institutional facilities. Some of the major GQ types can be further divided into detailed GQ types. For instance, other institutional facilities consist of mental, hospitals, and psychiatric units, hospitals with patients with who have no usual home elsewhere, inpatient hospice facilities, military treatment facilities, and residential schools for people with disabilities. Next slide, please. There are three major GQ types for non-institutional non quarters. They are college, university, student housing, military quarters, and other non-institutional facilities. There are some detailed GQ types under other non-institutional facilities are included in the decennial census, but they're out of scope for ACS. These are soup kitchens, regularly scheduled mobile food vans, targeted non-shelter outdoor locations, which those are used rate the population experiencing homelessness. And then there's also maritime merchant vessels and living quarters for victims of natural disasters. GQ type codes and definitions are usually updated prior to the decennial census. There were only minor changes for the 2020 census. So the ACS definitions have pretty much stayed the same since 2008. During data collection and processing, detailed GQ types are used, but ACS GQ data are only available for certain major GQ types. Next slide, please. The definitions factor into how the data is collected and tabulated. For instance, group quarters paper questionnaires differ from those for used for housing units in that only one person's data capture one person's data is captured on each questionnaire there's no relationship or housing questions and the question concerning receiving benefits for food stamps or snap is asked at the person level rather than the household level for some subjects the data for the gq population is limited for example poverty includes only people 15 years and over in other non-institutional facilities Living with grandchildren under 18, health insurance, place of work, journey to work, class of work, industry and occupation statistics are only available for people in non-institutional group quarters. Next slide, please. I will now turn over to Nicole Butler to discuss data collection procedures. Thank you, William. Good afternoon. Today, I will walk you through the ACS GQ data collection procedures focusing on our field component of the operation. The ACS GQ sample consists of 12 independent samples. A new group quarters sample is introduced each month. Data collection for the monthly sample lasts six weeks. We collect data in two phases, the GQ facility level and the resident level. At the GQ facility level, we sample about 18,000 GQ facilities each year. And for each selected facility, a sample of residents is selected for interviewing. Each of these parts have their own data collection instrument, the group quarters facility questionnaire, also known as the GQFQ, the group quarters CAFI used at our resident level, and the ACS1 GQ our paper questionnaire, also known as PAPI. Next slide. Prior to, conduct, prior to contacting or visiting the sample facility, the GQ contact person should have received a letter along with a brochure. An ACS field representative will contact the GQ to conduct the facility 
level interviews in person or over the phone. During the facility level interview, the field rep verifies the name, phone number, and address of the GQ, verifies the name, phone number, and email address of the contacts, confirms or changes the GQ type, and collects the maximum and current population of the GQ. Next slide. Also completed during the facility level interview is the resident roster collection. Based on the number of people living or staying at the GQ, the GQ contact person can provide the field rep with the randomly selected residents through one of these methods, either in person, over the phone, or our e-listing application. The instrument generates a random sample of resident level cases for large GQs, current GQ population um, greater than 15, and all residents are surveyed when the GQ population is 15 or less. Next slide. After the facility level interview is complete, the field representatives will conduct the GQ resident level data collection with the selected residents. Field representatives will collect data from residents either in person or by phone using our automated instruments. If the resident will not complete the interview in person or by phone, we may leave a paper questionnaire to be completed. Field reps may use the help of proxies when the sample resident is either not there or requires assistance. At the end of the field reps workday, data collected through our automated instruments is transmitted to the Census Bureau headquarters. Completed questionnaires are securely shipped to our national processing centers. And as Charles mentioned earlier, we are currently working on an internet data collection instrument for residents at a non-institutional root quarters. Now I will turn it back over to William and he will discuss uh, GQ data products. Thank you, Nicole. Measurements and estimation of the GQ population are designed in the ACS to be optimal for the state level and higher. Most GQ tables are only available for states, regions, divisions, and the nation. The exception to this is the detail table B26001. It provides just a GQ population and is available for all published geographies in the one-year ACS and down to the census tract for five-year ACS. This table lets data users assess the impact that the GQ population may have on various estimates within an area since characteristics of the GQ population can differ from the household population. Next slide, please. There are also subject tables that provide characteristics of the GQ population. The first one, S2601A, or for Puerto Rico, S2601APR, provides characteristics for the total root quarters, institutionalized and non-institutionalized populations. It's available only at the national level for the one-year ACS and for the nation, regions, divisions, and states for the five-year. It's sourced directly from the microdata and there's no detailed tables associated with it. Next slide, please. Similar to that table is S2601C, but it just provides characteristics for the total and GQ population for states with GQ populations of 65,000 or more in the one year ACS. It is also sourced directly from the microdata. Next slide, please. Subject table S2602 or S2602PR provides characteristics for the total population, the group quarters population, and for three major GQ types, adult correctional facilities, nursing facilities, and college university student housing. And these are the largest three major GQ types by population. Next slide, please. This table is only available for the nation for the one-year ACS and for the nation, regions, divisions, and states for the five-year. 
It's sourced from detail tables B26101 through B26120, which those detail tables are also available on data.census.gov. It's been around since the 2017 ACS, and it was we and it replaced the table S2601B. Next slide, please. S ta subject table S2603 is similar to S2602, but has two additional columns, one for the population in juvenile facilities and one for the population in military quarters and on military ships. Next slide, please. It's available for both the one and five-year ACS at only the national level, and it's sourced from detail tables B26201 to um, table B26220, and it's also been around since the 2017 ACS. Next slide, please. Besides the standard data products, there's also the ACS public use microdata sample. The PUMS includes a subsample of the ACS microdata devoid of personalized information and with additional protections applied to avoid disclosure of individuals. The ACS PUMS allows data users to create their own custom tabulations at the state level and in what are called public use microdata areas or PUMAs. These are specifically designed areas for the PUMS and they lay within the state and have a minimum population of 100,000. The PUMS has both person records and housing records. On the person records file, there's a variable relationship that includes categories for both the institutionalized GQ population and the non-institutionalized GQ population. These categories can be used with various demographic, social, and economic variables in order to obtain characteristics of the GQ population. The housing record files have a variable called type of unit that includes the categories housing units, persons in institutional group quarters, and persons in non-institutional group quarters. The only additional information that can be gleaned from the house, housing records is whether a person in group quarters is a recipient of food stamps or SNAP. Next slide, please. Now I'll turn it back over to Charles Gamble so he can talk about resources for learning more. So thank you, Nicole, and thank you, William, for some great information there on group quarters. So now as to, to wrap up today, we'll take a look at some additional resources to help your overall understanding and use of the ACS data. So first and foremost is the ACS main page, which is a great tool to start um, if you have any questions about the ACS. And this page can be found simply at census.gov forward slash ACS, or if you go to the census main page at census.gov, you can select surveys and programs, and then simply select, uh, select the ACS uh, to go to our main page. Uh, the ACS website contains a lot of information about the survey itself, such as data products, uh, different tools for data users to use, and sections like guidance for data users and technical documentation, which I'll cover in just a moment. And also, I do want to point out that several of the next coming slides will have the QR codes in the bottom right-hand corner, so you're more than welcome to scan those codes if you want to pull the pages uh, using your mobile device. So here's a further look at, at the guidance for data users uh, webpage. So on this page, two of the main items I want to point out are the subjects included in the survey or in the ACS rather. Uh, and when selecting the section, this will lead you to all the subjects in the ACS broken up by the different four characteristic types, such as the social, housing, economic, and demographic. And under the demographic characteristics section, you will find the GQ populations, uh, which if you do select will lead you to a full list of GQ tables in data.census.gov, which is the primary dissemination platform for Census Bureau data. Now, this page also contains our various handbooks, which are directed towards specific data users. Um, some of the titles of these handbooks are understanding and using ACS data and what all data users need to know. So those are for our general users, what federal agencies uh, need to know, and what state, state and local government uh, government user needs to know as well. And there's plenty more uh, handbooks in there as well, and they're all for specific data users. So if you're interested, uh, it's a good area to go to to get some more information from our handbooks. Uh, in the guidance data user section, you also find information on comparing different year releases of the ACS data and also comparing the ACS with the decennial census as well. 
and you can also find links to previous training presentations as well. As far as the technical doc documentation webpage uh, on our ACS website, it's also a very helpful location. Uh, it contains specific information as it relates to group quarters. Uh, so first, as can be seen on the slide itself, um, is the subject definitions, which will provide broad definitions regarding the GQ, as well as information as the inclusion of GQ within the ACS. Also, uh, you also have GQ definitions, which provide more specifics on the types of GQs, uh, which William covered earlier, and providing detailed, inf de detailed definitions on the different types, such as the correctional facilities and the institutes that fall under uh, each type. Uh, you also have military facilities and non-institutionalized facilities and much more. So as I begin to wrap up today's webinar, we invite you to stay in touch by telling us how you actually use ACS data. Um, for example, have you used it to uh, help your organization or uh, maybe help your community or grow a, or grow or expand a business? If so, please let us know. Uh, you can follow the links at the bottom of the slide, or you can also scan the QR code in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, sharing your story and doing so helps provide more support uh, and importance for the data we collect here at the United States Census Bureau. If you do submit a story, uh, my colleagues or myself will help you uh, draft that story up and get it published actually on our on our webpage so other data users um, can read your story as well. I also do want to inform you uh, that there is a group specifically for American Community Survey data users. Uh, this is simply known as the ACS Data Users Group. Uh, the purpose of this group is to simply increase or improve the understanding and value as well as the utility of the American Community Survey data. And also to promote uh, information sharing among data users about key ACS issues and applications. Now, the ACS Data Users Group includes uh, users uh, on the website of a population or a community of more than 3,700 users. Uh, myself and my colleagues are, are actually also part of the Data Users Group. Uh, so we do take a peek in there from time to time to help with questions or to post uh, helpful, insightful information. Uh, the website does contain um, information such as previous conference presentations and archive webinars. And uh, this online community is a site where members can openly share messages, materials, and announcements related to the Merit Community Survey. Uh, we also do host ACS Data User Conferences, typically every two years, uh, in order to provide an opportunity for the ACS Data Users as well as, as, well as Census Bureau staff to showcase uh, their work and exchange information about the experiences using ACS data. Uh, conferences are open to the public uh, and information is posted in advance um, on the Data Users Group website. I do also want to point out that membership is free to join, so feel free to join the ACS Data Users Group. Uh, to learn more, you can follow the link on the slide or once again, just scan that QR code and it'll take you right to the ACS Data Users Group. Uh, in closing, I encourage you to contact with us or stay connected with us directly. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach us at the phone number above on the slide or at our email, acso.users.support at census.gov um, to answer any of your data user questions you may have. You can also sign up uh, and manage alerts on the ACS via Gov Delivery. Um, you can add yourself to the Gov Delivery if you want the slides uh, from this presentation or any other presentations we provide. The Gov Delivery will send out a broadcast when materials are available. Um, you can also visit our website or, or stay connected to the various social media platforms using the hashtag ACS data. And one last thing, if you do plan to use ACS data, uh, make sure you, that you actually source the Census Bureau uh, as to where you actually receive the data. It helps provide information uh, to other users uh, that, may be, that may see the data that you pulled uh, the information or estimates from the American Community Survey. I would now like to open the webinar to any questions that we may have over the phone. Um, you can use the raise your hand feature uh, and we will take your questions in the order they come in. So, um, Lisa, I'll open up to you and then do we have any questions? If you have a question you'd like to answer over the phone, please click on the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Currently, we do not have any raised hands. Okay. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us by the phone number or the email address that's shared uh, on the screen. I do want to thank you all for joining our webinar today. And again, the recordings of this webinar, as well as the transcripts and the slides will be posted shortly. And uh, thank you for joining. Have a great day.
This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at this time.